Hi, I'm Scott Feinberg from The Hollywood Reporter, and it's great to be here today with Lady Gaga. Congratulations on a great performance of the New York Film Critics Circle Best Actress Award and a lot of good stuff going on for you at the moment, right? Thank you so much, Scott. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's been really wonderful. Uh, I appreciate all the awards and the nominations. It's It's been incredible to watch, and I just love being a part of this project. Uh, my entire cast, and Ridley Scott, my director, Giannina Scott, um, it's, this has been a really, uh, wonderful journey. Well, I wonder if you can take us back before it a little bit first, just to note, I mean, obviously most people, uh, first discovered you through music. And then in the last few years, we've been seeing more and more of you acting, but, um, can you just tell us a little bit about how early on acting was actually an interest of yours? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, so I actually uh, was very interested in being an actor long before I ever wanted to be a singer. And this all started when I was really l very little. Uh, I loved uh, I loved singing, dancing, and uh, performing uh, as an actress when I was really, really little. And uh, I began to take acting classes at a place called the Monica May Academy of Acting when I was nine years old. And then uh, I started to actually go to the Lee Strasberg Institute around 11. Uh, and that's a, an institute in uh, New York, um, right by Union Square. And um, it's based off of Stanislavski method. Uh, I did a lot of sense memory work and I studied there uh, through the end of high school. Uh, I also went to Circle in the Square Conservatory uh, during the summer. And I spent uh, two semesters at Tisch uh, for musical theater and before I dropped out to, to pursue my dreams. Uh, so I've been studying acting for a long time, and that also includes literature um, and, you know, philosophy about art. Um, I, I, I also took uh, art history classes. You know, I've just, I've always been a real Renaissance woman, and uh, it was part of the texture of me as a child to, uh, to follow artistry. So I, I, I love acting. I loved films, and uh, Judy Garland was my hero, it still is. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and here we are now, uh, all these years later. Yeah. I think that I, I put a lot of acting into my music in a way. And then after some cameos in Robert Rodriguez films and then a leading role in uh, Ryan Murphy's American Horror Story, uh, and then A Star is Born, of course, with the amazing Bradley Cooper and now Ridley Scott's House of Gucci. This has you know, now been uh, uh, more of a, a, a genuine trajectory for me that I can really sink my teeth into. Uh, as a, as a as a woman who loves the scholarly aspect of acting, and let's not forget a a little Sopranos appearance as well. I think That's before right. anything, right? <laughs> you got me there, Scott. That's true. I, yeah. I was an extra on the Sopranos. I also was an extra in an ACDC music video when I was way too young really? to be there. Yes, I was. <laughs> I knew so, I knew how to uh, headbang. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about uh you know you your first major role in a movie was a star is born you uh mentioned bradley and i'm sure there were a lot of you know things that you took away from that experience but i guess you know going from that to working with ridley scott who's been doing this for decades and decades um i guess let's just talk about how this came about when how soon after a star is born did you find out that there even was going to be such a project as House of Gucci? You know, it wasn't for quite some time. I would say it was at least a year. Um, and this this project was was floating around. And then I was I was flirting with the script and I had this very interesting relationship with the script. I was completely enamored that Ridley Scott was attached to it. Um, but I had heard that it was about a woman who was a murderer, and I played the countess on American Horror Story, who was also no notoriously a murderer um, uh, in, in the, by way of her needing to eat. Um, she, she fed off the blood of uh, all, all sorts of people, including children. Um, Understandable. So, understand as she, as as one does um so uh i uh, at first i thought um, uh, is this a thing you know do, do people want me to play a murderer again because i have 
some type of evil quality that I'm not aware of. Uh, but then I, I really got to know the script and uh, got to know Ridley on a deeper level. And uh, I realized that this story was about a woman that was really in love. And she actually did not marry him for his money. He didn't have money when they got married. And uh, she didn't kill him for his money because they were divorced when she, he was murdered. So uh, there is this sort of nuance to the character that I found interesting. And I discovered that this was a woman that she... Uh, she lived her life in a mode of survival. So this, this, this murder that took place was essentially something that came out of a, a need to survive. Uh, and, and in that way, the script that came from something that was sort of floating around me and orbiting me as I tried to figure out what it all meant uh, it became something really truly tangibly interesting and challenging and something I wanted to take on, how could I tell a story about a real woman who was not born a murderer? The Countess was born a murderer. She was born a vampire. Patrizia Reggiani was born a child, and she became a murderer. Now, this was, I believe, your first time playing somebody who had actually lived and is living. And, uh, you know, on I guess people talk about there being a sort of sense of responsibility an added sense of responsibility when that's the case um in this case it's extra complicated because i guess you know she's because of all that history that you recounted you know i don't know how uh interested she was in being consulted i don't know how interested you were in consulting her but does it add a, a little bit of extra uh burden for the actor when you're playing somebody who actually roamed the earth you know, I think that there it's sort of a double-edged sword, you know, it's like on, on the one hand, there's a, a real gift that you're being given because they were a real person. So there's, especially someone that was famous, there's lots of information you can find out about them, very specific details. I mean, I found video footage, I was so excited when I found video footage of her signing things. Um, uh, because uh, she was, she worked for her father uh, in um, in accounting, and uh, she was constantly signing checks and forging forging signatures. So watching the way she did it in real life, I could I could uh, f figure out uh, how to put her body into my body and the physicality of her. The 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 things that she went through, the the data points, the the biography, the the backstory of Patrizia Reggiani was right there. So in that way, on one side of the sword, it's a gift. On the other side, I think you can veer off into the territory of um, mimicking uh, or imitating somebody. Um, uh, which I think is not necessarily a mistake. Um, I think that everybody can approach doing a, a film about a real person in a, in a different way. Uh, but for me, I did, even if I s became very like her and similar to her, even if I seemed to be mimicking her in some way, I wanted that not to be driven by me um, copying her in some type of way or uh, actually mimicking her in some type of way, but rather that I would study her and study why she became the way she was, study her dialect, the particular type of Italian accent that she had, even when she spoke um, um, in, in Italian, uh, the, the way that she, that she spoke, the, the timbre of her voice, even the way it changed from being higher when she was younger to being lower when she was older because she, she started incessantly smoking. Uh, the, these are all the sorts of things that I, I would say are at play when playing a real person. Is, is you, you, you get the effect of the, the, the gratitude of all the information, and then after having all that information, you have to be careful, I think, not to... Um, not not to make, make too much of a characterization or a caricature, I should say, of the person, but rather to find the humanity. And and I I, I really wanted to find the humanity in her. And the, the biggest uh, responsibility I felt was uh, to her daughters. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought that uh, it was important that I tell a, a story about a woman and a story about women in general, um, not generalized. I like to be specific in my acting, um, but 
a, a woman who holds the stories of many women, women all over the world who lose their looks, who lose the, the, the love of their life, uh, women who think they're important um, in an intellectual space, in a business space, and who are disposed of, and what type of trauma and abuse does that induce, and how could I find her strength? The thing I found out Maurizio loved about her the most was how strong she was. How could I portray their mother in a way where she was real, even if she was wrong or if she was deeply flawed? Now, people are always, uh, non-actors are always curious about what you brought up earlier, Stanislavski method, um, these kind of mysterious things and how they're applied. And there's obviously been a lot of interest in the little bits and pieces that people have heard about how you applied those to preparing for this, but I want to leave it up to you to share as much as you'd like about just, you know, it is a, or in your case, it was a, a months long process of focusing on certain things. I know you said it's not mimicking or imitating exactly, but there were certain things that you focused on. Um, and I wonder what those were. Gosh, I, I focused in, um, I focused in pretty precisely on a lot of different things. Uh, like I said, the way she spoke, um, the way that she moved her body, uh, per particularly her neck, uh, her neck and her shoulders were like, had a very specific quality, especially when she was uh, lying. Um, but that was later in her life, so I kind of had to uh, figure out at what point in the script certain things that I discovered were usable and then at what point uh, earlier in her life would those things have to go away because she would not have yet experienced the trauma to kind of put her neck in that place. Uh, so I, I studied um, her mannerisms, I studied uh, the, the way that she did and did not have eye contact with people at various different times. I studied very intently her gaze. Uh, she had a very intense gaze and she has a very intense presence. Um, I studied her childhood. I, I, um, so I, what I would say is, is before we get to the sense memory, there's an intense narrative that's built around the human being and it's all written down and I read it over and over again. And that is done in conjunction with a breakdown of the script uh, with my wonderful acting teacher, Susan Batson, who's absolutely brilliant. Uh, her work with the script is just, it's absolutely mind blowing and um, intricate. Uh, and then the sense memory work, uh, th this work that I do is, uh, you know, from, from a, a, a young age, uh, I learned to use, you know, sound, taste, smell, and the ability to um, uh, have the mind evoke touch and feeling, uh, to uh, be generative of circumstance. Uh, so um, for me, uh, there was various uh, songs or textures or smells or um, uh, even just uh, closing my eyes and seeing an image of someone uh, could help me to map my own body and my own uh, nervous system to Patrizia Reggiani's nervous system. And, and, and I know that might sound curious, but from like a scientific and biological perspective, I think one of the ways that I think that like method acting seems to be mysterious as people are sort of saying, well, what is it that you're doing? Do you just think that you're that person? Do you forget who you are? When really for me, it's about not forgetting who I am. It's about calibrating my nervous system to what I believe to be the nervous system of the character. And once I calibrate that and I, um, I interpret my own trauma from my life uh, into the trauma of this woman, then we have like the train that's going to run on the tracks of Ridley Scott's film. And, you know, it, it, the, the steam that pumps into me is, is just this sort of endless onslaught of, uh, of, 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 of uh, evocative sense. And it allows me to be free in the space and to feel and touch and see and experience in a present way while also being centered in, in a new gravity, meaning I believe uh, while I'm working, the center of gravity from scene to scene has got to change because 
what's happening in the story is changing. And this is how I feel that I'm able to be real in a scene while also being consistent uh, while we shoot out of order so that the performance tracks, so that I understand where her heart is and where her bottom is. One of my favorite things to do before starting any scene, um, especially if I have one more, you know, if I, I really would to do three takes and he'd go, I've got it. And then, He'd say, do you want one more? And I'd say, yes, I, I would love, I, I totally, I totally read, I'd like <laughs> one more. Uh, and uh, I, would, I would do another one and uh, I would say to myself, protect your little girl because she was protecting herself. And so I used to think of me when I was young and then allow myself as Patricia to protect the young me in moments where I was being threatened. Uh, and I, I find that women, we are ferocious when we are protecting the little us that's inside. Well, and is this maybe connected to something else you've talked about that I think you visualize or, or draw upon certain animals? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I draw on animals. Um, uh, for this performance, uh, when she was young, she was a, a house cat. Um, uh, for its sort of elusive uh, character and uh, uh, um, aloof but charming, um, seductive but sweet and elegant. Um, uh, then, uh, then she became a fox once Rodolfo passes away because now the will is in uh, Maurizio's hands and the hunt begins. And, but again, this is a hunt for survival. So using an animal that hunts to eat, um, to eat, other animals uh, was more uh, appropriate than, for example, you know, an animal that doesn't eat other animals. Uh, so uh, right, right. The, the, the fox worked well um, and the fox was quite playful. So this allowed for her relationship with Maurizio and Aldo to be more playful while she was hunting because she's part of the family and she wants to keep the family close. And again, this is all mode of survival for an Italian woman is let's keep the family close together. I, I'm, I'm going to inspire my husband to take helm of this good fortune and to, uh, to really uh, uh, excel in the world in a way that I never could have excelled because I, I wasn't grown, I, I didn't grow up with the same wealth and privilege that, that, that my husband did. So it, it's this like, it, it, and, and then uh, this playful hunt, uh, like the fox burrowing through the snow changes when uh, the divorce happens, when uh, she's served with divorce papers by Domenico del Sole at the school, it's at this point that she goes from being a fox and playing around to becoming a panther and the hunt becomes serious. And I chose the panther because it cries after it kills its prey. Uh, and I believed that Patricia did uh, do something that was uh, essentially uh, the biggest mistake of her life. Um, it was done in a fit of rage and trauma, and it was also done for survival. And I believe that she experienced deep regret and pain afterwards. And that, I, I remember um, reading that um, when the police came to get her, they, they said, um, we're here to uh, arrest you um, for the murder of your husband. And she goes, good. So, um, wow. you know, I, I knew that she, I knew that she, she knew what she did was wrong. And I really believe she lived with deep, deep regret. And I think she still does. Um, so yes, animals, there you go. There's my long answer. I give lots of <laughs> no, long it's, answers, it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good, it's very very good. And uh, you know, I have spoken with a few of your co-stars uh, over the uh, last few months. And one of the things they each remarked about was that the way the way Ridley shoots is not something they've necessarily encountered before. I guess he has a lot of different cameras going at once so that maybe that results in fewer takes than there otherwise would normally be. Um, can you talk about his setup and how you like working that way? Uh, I really love Ridley's setup. It is very different um, from any way that I've worked before. Uh, there's a real geometry to the way that he shoots. It's, 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 uh, he's an architect 
and uh, the, I think you know he sees uh, scenes in shapes, uh, not not just in the circumstances of the story and where we are, but it's it's got it's got a whole graphic nature. Uh, so what I would say is, having worked in other uh, other scenarios. Um, you know, you can sometimes, depending on your, co you know, coverage, there's like a rehearsal or a warm-up period. And sometimes he, we would rehearse and he, we would block and, and, and we would take some time on things. Um, we, we would also go over the script, maybe change some things, to, like us. He was very collaborative with the actors all the time. Um, for example, if, if there was something for me that didn't uh, make like sense as an Italian woman, uh, I could say it and, and I was well received. I mean, ev everything was very collaborative and celebratory. He was very empowering. Um, but what I would also say is that you don't get that time, which I think is good. You don't get that time to warm up. Uh, so you have to be ready, which made made the being in character all the time essential for me. Because if I was just with her constantly, whether he yelled action or not, it didn't matter. I was right there and ready. Because I I don't bring with me uh, in the scene. Once they yell action, I throw all the work out the window. I mean, it's just I it's on an it's a, in another galaxy now. It's nowhere near me because if I'm not present and talking to the actor, I really believe that it. Uh, it destroys the reality of the performance. So what I would say is it's a real gift to us because essentially Ridley's saying, you have to be ready. You have to be ready because I'm going to shoot you all at the same time. I'm not going to shoot coverage. Uh, and, and I'm going to edit, he's going to edit it. It's going to be edited in this uh, way where whatever happened as it happened is going to be what's used. Uh, so it's, it allows for true alchemy. It's 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 not it's not just the magic of filmmaking. It's 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 filmmaking being made by a magician who really appreciates the uh, the nature of the work as it occurs on set. And I think that that I think that that's um, very special. I think that some people might view this as parameters and view this as like like rigid and difficult to uh, operate within. But you know. I am a jazz singer, and you have to learn the ink that's on the page before you can improvise. You know, you have to know your stuff before you can uh, make it your own. So Ridley just demands that you know your stuff, and I think that that sets a very high bar. And I don't think I don't think a single cast member of mine likes walking over low bars. So there were lots of high bars that we were all ready to jump over for for Ridley. He's he's wonderful. Well and you know what you transition perfectly to the last question I want to ask you which is that you know for even Meryl Streep who's been doing this you know acting let's say for 50 years I imagine it might be intimidating to share the screen with this is like probably somewhere between five and ten fellow Oscar winners who are unbelievable whether it's Al Pacino and Jeremy Irons and Jared Leto and just it's an a, a amazing group and I wonder for you um you know it's easy to forget because I think you're you're so good in this that you know again you've only been the star of one other movie prior to this was that intimidating to have to hold your own against these guys or do you kind of get a um a a kick or a, you know maybe kicks you up into high gear to know that you're doing it with people who are at the top of the, their game as well. You know, I think it, uh, it initially gave me this tremendous sense of gratitude uh, for the, the faith that all these actors had in working with me as a leading actress in the film. I could not believe the, the, the cast that was created. It was just, it was one of the most humbling experiences of my career. I, and what I will say is that when you know you will be working with people that are artists of this caliber, I think the most uh, sensible thing to do would be to honor that there are people all over the world that are willing to do anything. 
to be an actor and to be working in in the film industry. And you better work your butt off <laughs> and do a good job. And you better you better study. You better be ready. And also, most importantly, be willing and open to learn. There was so much for me to learn on that set. Every time Al was rehearsing, every time Jeremy was rehearsing, Adam, any time I saw anything happening on set, I was attuned and watching or I was doing my own work, uh, but I wasn't living in my head. You know, when you allow yourself to feel the, the, um, the soulful, like the ethos of the people around you, you can learn so much. So for me, uh, it was in learning from them that I saw an opportunity to grow. And also uh, the thing I had to be ready for the most was to truly live as her so that I could just purely listen and be in these scenes and, and react and respond uh, in a natural way. Uh, I think if I had been too intimidated all the time, it would have been impossible for me to do scenes with Al. Um, uh, but when I grounded in Patrizia and we were hanging out at his birthday party in Tuscany, I was just able to sit there. I remember sitting there and, I, um, and Federico, who did props, he brought over a bowl of nuts and um, uh, my grandfather, uh, he always, we, as a child, my, my grandmother always brought a bowl of nuts to the table after dinner, and we would all crack nuts at the table. And I remember sitting there going, okay, I'm gonna shoot this scene with Al Pacino, and I'm, I'm in character, and Adam's there, and Al's there, so I'm with Maurizio and Aldo, and I see the nuts, and I see this walnut, and I remember my grandfather cracking the hell out of walnuts, and I, and I go, Federico, per piacere, una. And he was like, okay. And he brings over some nutcrackers. And I just started cracking those nuts during that whole scene, just trying to stay awake while Aldo kept talking. And, it, and because in that scene, she's kind of over it. You know, she's been, she's been there all day in, with these smelly cows. And she wants Maurizio to work for the family. But Aldo's now had two birthday parties because he loves himself so much. And she's, she's just eaten those nuts. But that came from that place of my ancestors and my grandfather. And also in my ability to, to try to put myself firmly into the ground on equal footing with b both people in the room so that uh, I, I didn't shrink w with intimidation. I, I, um, but I will say that when I first uh, met Al in person when we were in Rome, uh, that, was, uh, that was really uh, a special moment. And I, and I had a long chat with myself <laughs> that that feeling had to go away so that I could right. do my job on set. Uh, he's he's a, an immaculate human being, and uh, the, the getting to know him has been wonderful. Well, and I know as impressed as as you are with them, uh, having having spoken with Al and Jared recently, it was very clear that it was very mutual. So uh, I think you 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 very much impressed them and a lot of other people. So thanks for doing this and uh, enjoy the rest of the season. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Scott.